am super excited because I have a lot of really fun and special guests that are hanging out with me. First, I have Valerie Webkinberg, who is an author of a book about a small cat named Miles who goes on the Mayflower. And then I also have Regan and Randy hanging out with me, which is pretty fantastic and awesome too. So I am going to introduce all of them so you can meet all of them and they can wave and see you guys on TV. So this is Regan. Regan, can you wave? You can say hi. Hi. <laughs> Do you hear yourself? Kind of. Kind of. <laughs> pretty exciting. And then we've got Valerie. Hi, thanks for tuning in. Yeah, and then last but certainly not least, there is Randy. Hello. Waving to everybody. He's wearing a red shirt. I'm loving that. We've got lots of glitter happening in here in the studio, which is pretty fantastic and awesome. But um, but I'm super excited. Valerie has written a book. Have you guys, Randy, have you ever written a book before? No. No? How about you, Reagan? Have you ever written a book? Well, kind of. Kind of? A little. What are your favorite books to read? Do I What kind of characters do they have? I like um, a book about a cat. Wait, a dog. Sorry. You a like dog. Do you like animal books, like dogs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. And Randy, what kind of books are your favorite books? We have a chapter. Chapter. Chapter books. Yeah. Yeah. You like reading long chapter books. That is amazing. Yeah. All right. Well, Valerie, we would love to hear about the inspiration for your books. Um, about Miles. Okay, well Miles is my cat. He lives at my house and he was the inspiration for the book. Miles just celebrated his 13th birthday and he loves to explore the backyard. We call him the backyard adventurer. Yeah. And when we like to think about him taking adventures around the backyard and wondered what he was thinking. Did he, when he was uh, walking through the tall grass, did he think he was in the jungle? jungle? And when he was under the pine trees, did he think he was in the forest? And so one day, um, my son Michael and I decided that we would write a story down and tape Michael's, Miles on his own adventure. That's fantastic. Regan, do you have any pets at home? I have a cat. You have a cat? What's your cat's name? Tootie. Tootie? What kind of cat is Tootie? Just a house cat. Just a house cat? Um, so this is, you call him a tuxedo cat, don't you? We call him a tuxedo cat because his fur is mostly black, but he has a white front and four white paws. That's fantastic. Randy, do you have any pets at home? Yeah, I'm a dog. You have a dog? What's your dog's name? Lilo. Lilo. Like from Lilo and Stitch? Yeah. Oh, I love it. Is that one of your favorite movies? Yeah. We love Lilo and Stitch here as well. It's a pretty, pretty awesome movie. Um, so Miles got his name from a special character, didn't he? Miles is named after Miles Standish. Miles Standish was one of the travelers on the Mayflower when it sailed in 1620. And we got Miles as a pet around Thanksgiving time. And so we thought it would be fitting to honor the pilgrims by naming the cat after Miles. I love that. So where did you know, <clears throat> learn that Ma Miles Standish was, a, was a, somebody on the Mayflower? How did you well, find that out? Um, my main career was teaching first grade, and I've spent a lot of years teaching first graders about the uh, beginnings of American history and the Mayflower and the Pilgrims. So I was familiar with Miles Standish, and, um, but doing research for the book, we discovered a different kind of a role um, that Miles Standish had on the Mayflower. Oh, awesome. What grade are you in, Reagan? Uh, I'm in first grade. You're in first grade? I'm in second Perfect. Yes, that is perfect. That's exciting, isn't it? First grade's a great grade. It is a great grade. And Randy, are you still going to school? I know you're doing some acting stuff. I'm done with school. You're done with school? Uh-huh. But you're getting to do some acting things, which is pretty cool too, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. So what were your what was your favorite subject when you were in school, Randy? I don't remember. You don't remember? That's okay. Reagan, what is your favorite thing to learn about? Do you like history or do you like math or do you like science? I like reading. You like the reading? How love perfect. Reading too. It's like we plucked you off of the street. This is perfect. This is the perfect show for you, Reagan. We're so excited that you're here. Well, you have mentioned a number of times that your book was not written by just you. That's right. I have a co author, uh, two co authors, I like to say. I have uh, my son, Michael Webkenberg. He and I co authored the story. Michael mm -hmm. is an avid hiker and camper and a lover of history and with uh, uh, coordinated with my teaching experience and love of children's books we decided to collaborate and write the story together 
And since Miles was the inspiration, we like to call him the co-author, too. We like to give him some credit, yes, too. Yes, we yes. do. He inspired a lot. Um, and so in the process of kind of writing this book, you also had to think about visually what it would look like because it's a book for kids that are about in yes. first and second grade. Mm-hmm. Is that accurate? Mm-hmm. And so you partnered with somebody else. Can you talk about mm-hmm. her? We partnered with Elizabeth Guilford. She is the illustrator. She is uh, lives in Cincinnati and is a graduate from Xavier of Xavier University. And we, um, I consider Elizabeth the person who brings the story to life. She has, there are enough illustrations in the book to give you an idea of what miles looks like or what the journey might look like but there are enough pages without illustrations so that you can use your own imagination and the reader can uh, visualize what might be happening in their own way so how involved were you we've had authors and illustrators in here before and we've kind of talked about what their process looked like as far as um, illustrating and how involved were you in kind of helping select which images or what the cat looked like and different things like that Elizabeth drew and painted uh, several different styles of Miles. She did some watercolors, some colored pencils and and paintings in a couple different styles. And we picked the style that we thought looked most the way we wanted to uh, Miles to look. The way sort of like it really, he really looks like that. We wanted it to be sort of realistic. And then uh, Elizabeth did sketches of different parts of the story, things that she thought were important. And um, then we had some input on that and and from the sketches, we decided which images would be most important to moving the story along. And we gave her a lot of uh, we gave her a lot of freedom to to uh, do the things that, that she wanted to do to tell the parts of the story that she thought were important. And then we had photographs from visiting Plymouth because we wanted the story to be historically accurate. So then the pictures of the Mayflower and some of the Plymouth actors, she took pictures, the photographs, and turned those into paintings. Amazing. Reagan, do you like to draw pictures too? Yeah. Yeah. Randy, how do you feel about drawing pictures? Yeah. Yeah, you like drawing pictures too. Are you guys ready and so excited to see the pictures of what Miles looks like, the paintings yeah. and everything? Yeah. Yeah. Let's ch- jump into the book. This is Miles on the Mayflower. This is what the cover of the book looks like, which is pretty exciting. All right. And Valerie's going to read it for us. Okay. Here we go. Miles, my ears perked up at the sound of my name. Don't wander off too far. I turned around and saw backpacks, tents, and sleeping bags on the patio. I ran across the yard to see what was going on. My family had gathered around the table. We will follow this trail into the woods, one of them said, pointing on the map. If we stay on the trail, we will come to a stream. Trails? Woods? Tents and sleeping bags? They must be going on a camping trip. I like hiking in the woods. My paws can go quickly. I can see in the dark. I can sleep anywhere. I jumped onto the table for a closer look. Miles, you got muddy paw prints all over the map. Now it looks like you walked all the way to Plymouth. Plymouth? Where is that, I wondered. After we cross the stream, we should see signs for Plymouth Harbor. That is where the Mayflower will be anchored. The Mayflower? That is what my family calls the little brown ship that sits on a shelf in our house. It has a white flower with five petals painted on the back. The family put food in their backpacks. One of them gave me a pat on the head and a scratch behind my ears, and I settled down for a little cat nap. When I woke up, they were gone. Something fluttering in the breeze caught my eye. It was the map. My family had left the map. The map showed the way to Plymouth. Without it, my family might get lost. Somehow, I had to take the map to them. I grabbed my pack. I stuffed the map inside it. Then I ran down the road. There was no trace of my family. I walked until I came to the woods. I saw a sign near an opening in the trees. The sign looked just like the one on the map. A nearby path led into the woods. There were two sets of footprints on the trail. My family must have gone this way. Maybe I could catch up to them. The sun was high overhead. The day was hot, but it was cooler in the shady woods. I trotted along easily. Every now and then, I stopped to check the map. After a while... The sky turned gray and dark. 
The wind rustled in the leaves. Deep rumblings of thunder sounded in the distance. It began to rain. I do not like to get wet. I needed to find shelter to keep myself dry. I jumped over tree roots. I ran through tangled brush. At last, I found a hollow log and crawled inside. My nose wrinkled at an unpleasant smell. I was not alone. Two beady eyes peered at me. I stared back. The animal hissed in surprise. I hissed back. I was not going to give up my shelter. I growled my loudest growl, and the other creature backed out. I watched the striped skunk waddle off. Big zigzags of light flashed in the sky. I covered my eyes. Boom! I jumped at every crack of thunder. Crack! Then thud! Something fell on my roof. I tried to sleep, but I was miserable inside the rotting log. The drip, drip, drip kept me awake long after the storm was over. Woohoo! Woohoo! An owl hooted in the pitch black night. Chickadee dee dee! The bird's song woke me up. I peeked out of my log into the haze of early morning. There was no sign of danger now. The rain-soaked forest sparkled in the sun. I checked the map. I did not want to get lost now. I continued on the trail and came to a rushing stream. I was hungry. There was no food in my pack, but there were fish in the stream, and fish are good to eat. When I caught one, it flip-flopped in my mouth. It was not easy to hold on to those wiggly creatures. Sunshine began to poke through the leaves more and more as I hiked along the trail. Soon I could see an opening in the trees ahead. I found a dry patch of grass and sat down. I looked at the map once more. Yes, Plymouth Harbor should be over the next hill. Would I see the Mayflower in the water? I could not wait. But would my family be there? I hoped they had not gotten lost without the map. I was so excited I ran right through a mud puddle. My white paws turned brown, but that did not bother me. I was going to see the sea. Finally, I came to the top of the hill and into the bright, warm sunlight. From the top of the hill, I could see a long way. There it was, the sea, and floating in the harbor was a ship. It was brown. It had a white flower painted on the back. The flower had five petals. The Mayflower! I had made it! I hoped my family would be nearby. In my excitement, I ran down the hill all the way to the water's edge. The closer I got to the ship, the bigger it looked. Up close, it was bigger than a house. It looked like a ship on the shelf at home, but it was big enough to carry many people. Maybe my family was on board. The ship rocked gently in the harbor. The wood creaked quietly. Its flags waved in the salty breeze. I saw many people. One man climbed up the mast towards the sails. He climbed as fast as a squirrel in the tree. Other people were on the deck. Some carried boxes. Some were tying ropes. I looked for my family, but I could not. Them. Ahoy there! You're not from around here, are you? I was surprised to hear another voice like mine. It was coming from the ship. No, I just arrived, I called out. I'm looking for my family. They were headed this way. Come on up, called the other cat. I scampered up the gangway and on to the ship. My name is Miles, I said. I'm Bradford, said my new friend. I live here in Plymouth. My family helps tell visitors the story of the people who sailed on the Mayflower long ago. This ship sailed long ago, I asked. Not this ship, but one just like it, Bradford explained. The first Mayflower sailed across the ocean about 400 years ago. It sailed all the way from England. This Mayflower was built much later. It helps people learn about what happened on the Pilgrim's Voyage 
1620. Who are the pilgrims, I ask? That is what we call the people who came to Plymouth on the Mayflower, Bradford replied. But the word pilgrim can mean anyone who travels on a long journey. I had traveled a long way to get to Plymouth. Could I be a pilgrim too? Come on, I'll show you around the ship. We can keep an eye out for your family while we look around, said Bradford. A lot of people were coming on board. It was very crowded. I saw lots of hiking boots, but none were on the feet of my family. A man was welcoming each visitor aboard. He wore a black hat and gray pants that came just below his knees. Who is that man? I asked Bradford. The one in the black hat and gray breeches? He is an actor. He's playing the part of one of the passengers who traveled on the first Mayflower voyage, Bradford explained. I perked up my ears to hear what the man was saying now. Step back in history and imagine that you are a traveler on the Mayflower, he said. You might be leaving England for the freedom to live your faith as you believe. You might be going to the New World to become a landowner. Maybe you are a sailor, simply looking for an adventure. Think about what it would be like to leave your home behind. How would you feel if you knew you might never see your friends or family again? Asked the actor. All the travelers knew they had a long and dangerous voyage ahead of them, he continued. Still, they had the courage to go. The pilgrims prayed that God would protect them as they sailed across the vast ocean. Let's go downstairs to the tween deck, Bradford whispered. Maybe your family is down there. Watch your step. It is windy today and the waves are choppy. That makes the ship rock a bit. We tiptoed carefully down the steep steps. A girl at the bottom of the steps was talking with some other visitors. Her head was covered with a white cap. She wore a white apron over her long skirt. I guess that she was an actor, too. <coughs> the passengers stayed down here during the voyage. It was very crowded, she said. It was crowded today, too. I was thankful that Bradford and I were small. We could go places where the people could not fit. In the old days... There were no electric lights or fans, said the girl. It was dark and damp below the deck. Many people got sick as the ship dipped and rolled in the waves. I knew how they must have felt. The rolling made my stomach flip-flop like the fish at the stream. The voyage took a long time. After many days at sea, the food began to go bad, she explained. Rats and mice nibbled on it, too. The people did not get much to eat. Then the girl pointed right at Bradford and me. See those cats, she said? The crew always kept some cats on board. They chased away the rats and mice. I did not want to chase rats and mice right now. I wanted to find my family. I did not see them on the tween deck, so I scampered back up the steps. Bradford followed me. We went back on the main deck. I saw another actor wearing gray breeches. His hat had a rope tied around its floppy brim. He was talking loudly. The other people were listening to him. Some days the wind was calm, he said. Other times there were terrible storms. The wind roared for days. The waves grew very tall. Water poured over the sides of the ship. During a very bad storm, a passenger was knocked overboard. The wind howled. Waves crashed over him. The water was icy cold. But the man was lucky. He saw a rope hanging down in the water. He grabbed the rope and held on. Strong, brave men pulled him back onto the ship. He was cold and wet, but he was safe. The pilgrims feared the wind and waves, but their faith stayed strong. They thanked God for saving the man's life. They prayed that God would bring all of them safely to the new world. After 66 days at sea, the sailor saw land. Everyone was thankful that the long journey was over. I felt like I had been on the Mayflower for a long time, too. I was getting worried about my family. They were nowhere in sight. I wondered if they had gotten lost without the map.
Just then I heard someone shouting, Land ahoy! Land ho! The voice came from high above me. I looked up and saw a sailor on the platform at the top of the mast. Brad, what is that man doing way up there, I asked. He is playing the part of the lookout, Bradford replied. That little platform is called the crow's nest. You can see a long way from there. Land ho means that he can see land ahead. That gave me an idea. I could climb up to the crow's nest. Maybe I could see my family from up there. I leaped onto the rigging. The web of knotted rope swayed in the wind. It was hard to climb. The mast was taller than it looked from the deck below. Suddenly, the wind blew the map out of my pack. I reached out to grab it. Splash! The water was cold. The waves were big. I was scared. I heard Bradford howling, Grab the rope, Miles. Hold on tight. I grabbed the rope. I held on tight. Strong hands pulled me out of the water. I was cold and wet, but I was safe. Many people gathered around me. Everyone was talking at once. Then I heard some voices I knew very well. Miles, what are you doing on the Mayflower? You are miles from home. Did you travel all the way here by yourself? That was very brave. I was so happy to see my family. They put me in a backpack. Now I wouldn't have to walk all the way home by myself. Come on, little pilgrim, they said. Let's head home. Fantastic. Big round of applause for Valerie. Reading her fantastic book about Miles. So, um, Reagan, what did you think about the book? I thought it was good. You liked it? Can you think of maybe what one of your favorite parts was or something that you thought was interesting? I liked when he met the skunk in the log. I liked when he found his parents on the Mayflower. Yeah, that was a good thing that happened, wasn't it? I'm sure he was excited. Randy, what did you think about the book? I liked it. You liked it? Did you have a favorite part that happened? I don't know. You don't know? So those of you that are watching from your rooms, you guys are welcome to call in and tell us what your favorite parts were. The illustrations were fantastic. Um, and I also was curious, I noticed, <laughs> you liked it too? Fantastic. <laughs> Amazing. So there are lots of really good parts about the book, but one of the things I noticed is some of the words were bigger. And so I was kind of curious what that was about. Well, the, uh, we thought it would be a good idea to have bold, bigger words in color, some of the important words. So it, it's a, when you're reading it, you see that those are important parts of the story, and then it gives a good way to emphasize it if you're reading it out loud. Fantastic, so that you know exactly where to emphasize those letters. That's amazing. Do you guys, Reagan, have you ever gotten to go someplace new and exciting and adventurous that you've never been before? Yeah. What was one of the places that you got to go to? She's looking to dad for some help. Have you ever gone on a vacation before? Yeah. What kind of, what was one of your pl favorite places to go on a vacation? Disney. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so if Miles went someplace next, where would you want Miles to go? If he went on another, another adventure, where do you think Miles should end up? Disney. <laughs> you think he should go to Disney? Oh, that'd and be fun. That'd, that'd be pretty fun, wouldn't it? That would be very if he, fun. If he was on one of the roller coasters and someone was sitting beside him, Hey, kitty. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to hold on tight, wouldn't he? Yeah. <laughs> what was one of your favorite rides at Disney? Mm. Do you remember? I really what? don't have a favorite. I like them all. You liked them all? Was there a certain ride that you're like, Miles has to go on that one? Mm. It's okay. I. <laughs> it's okay. I don't know. I really don't remember the names of any rides. That is okay. I just like riding them. That's fantastic. <laughs> we have a caller, WKAD. Who's this? Ariel. Hey, Ariel. Thanks for calling in. Can you say hi to Valerie for me? Hi. Hi, Ariel. Thanks for tuning in. Do you have a favorite part of the book that you loved, Ariel? Um, kind of. Kind of. Do you remember any parts of it? What did you think about our friend Miles? 
It was pretty good. Do you remember what kind of cat he was or what colors he was? He was, I think, gray. You, well, he was kind of a mix of two colors, which was black and, do you think white? Because black and white make gray. Randy's nodding his head, yes. Randy, have you, Ariel, have you gotten to go on any adventures before? Yes. What was one of your favorite adventures to go on? When I went to Florida and went to Walt Disney World. Oh, another Disney. Fantastic. <laughs> Randy, have you gotten to go on any adventures yeah. before? What's one of your favorite? It's spring training. Spring training for, oh. for the Reds? You Cubs. went down to Adrenas? Oh, for the Cubs. You went down to Arizona? Yeah. Oh, Awesome. Fantastic. Is that you guys are from Illinois? That's right. That would explain why you love the Cubs. I just saw your Cincinnati Reds Cubs shirt, and so I thought Reds maybe, but. <laughs> oh, fantastic. You went to the game yesterday? Yeah. What if Miles went to a professional baseball game? Yeah. Would you like that? Yeah. So Miles <laughs> likes to visit places in history. So what was maybe one? Do you guys have a favorite thing in history that you've learned about before? No. Ariel, do you have a favorite thing in history that you've learned about before? Um. So Miles no, learned about some No, but we pilgrims. talked about it in school and class. Yeah, you do. What are you <laughs> learning about in history now, Ariel? You know. I'm kind of behind because I'm in here. So. That's that's okay. That's all right. Reagan, do you have any favorite things in history that have happened that you think Miles should learn more about? Um. Huh? The pool. I think that um, you should learn about more about the. I think you should learn more, even more about the Mayflower, because I think that was pretty interesting. Yeah, fantastic. He he might become a water cat. He might. He might. That would be that would be yeah. good to know about. It would, that would be. be good to find out more about the Mayflower. It would be. Randy, did you come up with something that you think? The moon. The moon? Yeah. Which, the first yeah. cat on the moon. That reminds me that there's a record that's being broken. Have you heard about this record that's being broken? I can't think of the astronaut's name, but there's an astronaut. She's going to spend the most days in space ever uh, coming in April, and they're extending it three more weeks, so it's going to be a really hard record to break. But it's a woman astronaut who's spent the most days in, in, in space right now. It's pretty exciting. We're it's history in the making. History in the making. That's that's yeah. what we're trying to promote. Yeah. History in the making. Yeah. So maybe that maybe that's the next place is that um, Miles can be visit the astronauts up in. They're in on space. the space station. Right? Yeah, they're the on space the space station. station. They are. Mm -hmm. out we in do want to write one about the Apollo astronauts. Yeah, that um, would be exciting. And have uh, my daughter thinks that it would be interesting to have Miles drive in one of the the uh, lunar rovers. Oh, so yes. um, since he won't be able to go actually go to the moon. We're thinking about taking him to the Smithsonian. Yeah, that would be very exciting. That would be very cool. Randy, would you like that idea? Yeah. That way he can learn about space. Mm -hmm. I love it. I mm -hmm. love it. Well, we have a little bit more time. Do we want to go through some of these questions? Okay. Is that okay? Yep, yeah, that'd be great. All right, so we've got this these pictures, and it says Miles hiked on a trail. And so this is actual real photographs along with the pictures, mm -hmm. the illustrations mm -hmm. from the book. There is historical information in the story. We wanted to uh, show the reader. I wanted to show the reader what the the place or actually looks like in a photograph, and then how that was turned into an illustration. So this is a picture from the Miles Standish Forest, which is in uh, Massachusetts. And then on the illustration, you can see that there are some clues. So Miles, we didn't. How would Miles know he was on the right track? And there are a couple of clues that you might notice there are footprints on the trail. And then the sign, which is telling him that he's on the way to Plymouth, has the same markings of the Mayflower that are on the map. So that was how we, we as the writer and the illustrator, would uh, let the reader know that Miles was on the right path to the Plymouth. To Plymouth. Did you guys notice that? So I'll show you with my mouth. Yep. So here's kind of the map. And you see this symbol right here. Do you think that's called a Mayflower? Mm. And then see the footprints that she was talking about? That's mm. how he knew. He knew. All right, and we've got one more. How did Miles know he had found the Mayflower? Can you spot the clue? 
Can you guys see on that picture a clue? Yeah, the flower. Yeah. The flower, right, right. Absolutely. This is a picture, a photograph of the Mayflower too, which is an exact replica of the original Mayflower. And on the front of the ship is the five-petaled white flower, which is the Mayflower. And it's now the uh, state flower of Massachusetts. And so that would be how Miles would know he, he was on the right ship. There are other ships in the harbor, but this is how he knew that he was on the right one. Yeah. So, Reagan, do you see it on the drawing here, too? Yeah. The little symbol right here. Miles knew where he was going. These are some photographs of the Mayflower, too, in Boston, uh, in uh, Plymouth Harbor. In Plymouth Harbor. So, you guys are both not from Cincinnati. Isn't that right, Reagan? Yeah. So, if Miles came to your city, what sort of things do you think Miles should do in your city to I'd learn about your city? I'd say he should probably go to my house. And I could teach him about, you know, my city. And then you can introduce your cat to Miles, right? Yeah. They can hang out and they can become best friends. I love it. I love Even it. Even though my cat doesn't really like us meeting other cats. Yeah. Yeah. Cats? We, we had another cat, but then we got mm -hmm. rid of her because like, oh. our cat didn't like that other cat. Mm, that's okay. Randy, how about you? If you're in basketball. Basketball. Uh, he should check out the basketball courts. Yeah. That's amazing. He is going to be a sports fan, and you're so he is a sports fanatic in all of the Miles books that you would yeah. write. I love it. Ariel, how about you? Where, if Miles came home with you, what kind of things would you take him and, and teach him in, in your city where you're from? Probably like dance or show him around. You would dance with him and show him <laughs> around? I think it, Miles should have a dance moves, some serious dance moves. I love it. So we've got a couple more photos. Do you guys want to see more photos of the actual Mayflower, too? Yeah. Yeah? All right, here's some more yeah. photos for you guys. That's the photo of the, the crow's nest where Miles heard the um, sailor yelling, land ho, and he climbed up that. I don't think he knew what was going to happen when he got to the top. And then uh, there's a picture of the deck where Miles was wrapped in his little blue towel after he was rescued from the cold water of the Plymouth Harbor. Fantastic. And the, the people that Miles met on the Mayflower were actually pilgrim actors. Since the pilgrims were alive 400 years ago, there were not any actual pilgrims to meet. But these people are wearing costumes, and they tell the parts of the story that Miles learned about. Yes, yeah, so there's William Bradford, Elizabeth Tilly, mm -hmm. and uh, John Howland. Mm -hmm. John Howland is the man who fell in the water and was rescued, and that really did happen. And... Uh, Elizabeth Tilly was also in Plymouth, and later Elizabeth Tilly and John Helen were married and had 10 children. So the real people, mm -hmm, the actually, real people. these things happened to them, and so they retell those stories on Plymouth, too, which is pretty exciting and pretty awesome. Well, we are so grateful, Valerie, that you were able to come and hang out with us. Can we give a big round of applause for Valerie? Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Ariel, welcome. thanks for calling in. Um, Ariel, I think, uh, Valerie, are you going to stick around and sign some books mm -hmm, for us mm -hmm. and give them? So, Ariel, we're going to bring you a copy of one of the books for you, okay? Mm -hmm. Would you like that? Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, Ariel, thanks for calling in. Valerie, you want to say bye to Ariel one more time? Thanks. Bye, Ariel. Bye. <laughs> um, and then the rest of us, we're going to hang out in here. She's going to sign some books, and then we'll get you guys out of here. But we're so grateful that you guys came and hang out with, hung out with Valerie as well. Thanks for stopping Thank by. Thank you. We hope you guys had a really good time. Randy, can you say bye to everyone? Bye. And how about you, Reagan? Can you say bye to everyone who's watching from their rooms? Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys are watching WKID on Channel 33. We will be back at 430 with some Captain Nutrition happening later today. And then at um, 630 tonight is Kids Bingo. So if you are between the ages of 3 and 11, make sure you get your bingo card from the Activity Center or talk to your child life specialist or nurses and they will get you one. Um, but it is superhero bingo tonight, so make sure you guys are tuned in for that stuff. Bye, guys.